Hey, it's Stephen Gaudio. Um, I'm going to be reacting to Philip Tides. This is done by a, uh, I wouldn't say professional theater, but um, it's mostly kids, but it's, it's pretty good production. Um, yeah, so just a little bit about my background. Uh, my brother's an actor, so I've seen probably over 50 plays and musicals and opera. So um, I kind of know how things work on a stage and um, how many different types of aspects they could bring into it to kind of make it really interesting and new. Um, as far as my educational background in this, um, I've taken, I think, seven English classes at Farmingdale, and uh, I think three of them were based strongly upon um, Greek mythology. So um, let's just get right into it, and we'll, uh, we'll get it going. This is from the middle of the play here. Um, this is the scene where Philip Tides is uh, struggling hard, as you'll see when he comes out here in the middle. And um, this is the scene where he gives up his bow to uh, Neopolemus to hold on to and uh, the events that play out after. So we'll start it up. Ah. What is it? It's your sickness causing you pain. It's all right. I think it's easier. So right out the gate, yeah, you know, just pause. You'll see that um, the setting the scene here, we have the chorus, which are the boys in uh, gray. I think yeah, gray jumpsuits, and um, the middle and the front is going to be Philip Tides, and behind him is Neopolemus. Ask them to be gentle, to come and save me. What's wrong with you? Tell me. I can't keep you from here any longer. It's all over for me. Ah! It goes through me. I'm being eaten alive. I grab a sword to hand. Strike my foot. Cut it off. Quick as you can. What? Okay, so obviously the struggle and pain that uh, Philip Tees is going through is excruciating. Um, you see that bottom right leg is just like. It's, he's limping on it, he's screaming, and he's telling Neopolemus to just cut it off. So um, this is just, he really portrays the, uh, the gruesomeness of how bad this wound is and how it's affecting him and his mind, too. You'll hear him and the way he talks about it. What should I do? Don't be afraid to take flight. This happens from time to time. The disease, it comes and goes. Poor, poor man. What can I do to help? Take my bow, just until the attack subsides. Sleep takes me soon after the pain lets up. And if whilst I'm asleep, they can. And I charge about the dog, do not give it up to them. Not willingly, not unwillingly. Whatever they try. I have no fear of my intentions. No one will touch this bow except you and I. That's it, Smith. Um, I think the actor of Philip Tees did a really great job at um, showing how much the bow is important to him. Um, without the bow, he seems to be pretty much nothing. And, um, it's really his only means of survival at this point. And you'll see him actually, um, nod to that as we go on. What should come with it? Yeah. Take it. God's grant us both with these prayers. He grants us a safe and easy voyage to a destination, to wherever the heaven judges right and our mission tends. I'm afraid, Charles, that your prayers may be in vain. The blood is flowing again, dark and thick from deep down. Now you understand. Don't run away. Ah! I only wish that a could feel this agony tearing through him. Ah! Death! Death! Why did an every day I call for you like this? And yet you never come! Okay, so at this point here, he's um, screaming for death as he just pretty much doesn't want to live anymore. Um, I find it very cool how they did this was it's kind of like an aside, but they, um, they put the light just directly on him and it really emphasizes how he feels alone and um, 
like there's no help or anything and he's just sitting there by himself and you see just the light shining him on him i felt like this was a cool add-on um for this uh production and it really um really shows and emphasizes his pain and his loneliness in this um on this island here I did this one too for Heracles, and it was such an act that I received the weapon which you were now holding. Ah! Also notice how the color is changing of the light. Um, here, I guess the red is, is um, supposed to be symbolic for maybe he's bleeding or um, maybe the anger that he feels that he has to go through all this. I thought I was acting rightly. What's your answer? Ah! Why don't you speak? Ah! Where are you? Ah! Ah! I beg of you, don't leave me here like this. Ah! Don't worry. We'll wait. You will. Be sure. Ready for death. So there's Neopolymus. He's, um, I guess, reassuring him that he's going to, you know, still be there for him. Um, and right here, this is pretty much the point where he passes out. And um, I find that the, um, I guess, the clothing that they're wearing, um, as we see the chorus here, they kind of, they fall into the background. You don't really see them. I find that that was a really good, um, a really good thing to do from the dressers or whoever ideal that was. Um, also, the torn clothes of Philip Tides are, it looks like it was actually shot back in the day. So that's pretty cool. And then um, Neopolymus, his, I don't know what's up with his attire, but I think that that's kind of a little out of place. They could have maybe dressed him up in something a little bit different. Sleep. Tired bodies covered in sweat. Let him rest, friends. Let him sleep. Sleep, innocent of pain. Sleep, innocent of hurt. Breathe over it, Lord. Soft breath of contentment and sweet happiness. Let your radiance fill his eyes as now. Listen to the Come. music. Come. So. See where you stand. Your next step. What do you think? Why are we waiting? Swift action at the right moment is the wise protector. He can't hear us. Tell our lips. Our pump of the boat will fail if we sail away, leaving him. The gull of the bottom is his. The boss did he half done. To lie. To bring on his shame and disgrace. These are matters for the gods, sir. When you answer next, speak softly. Sleep. To rest to the sick, as a shark looks to sea, look for a way to do it in secret. Um, I thought it was a good idea to have um different, I guess, kids here of the chorus speaking the different lines. I think it kind of breaks it up a little bit. Um, but obviously, this doesn't stay true to how um these plays are actually presented. Um, during this, uh, during the time that they were written, um, like we know, there's only supposed to be three people on the stage, and here it looks like we have uh, like almost ten people, which is you know not what it's supposed to be, but I think it brings it into a more of a modern taste, and I think it's it's a cool breakup of you know voices and monotony than that it would be if it was just three people doing it. Um, I found it cool also that as he wakes up, the lights go on, um, kind of like it's daytime again. So the transition of time with the use of light 
I found I found that to be like really cool. And then what I saw you wait patiently by my side. Your nature is noble, Charles. True to nobility. <laughs> Come. Soon the weakness lets up. Be off. Up again. There'll be no shirking from the job. Now you and I have decided what we should do. Take <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Don't speak like this. It's sickened by my infection. You're no longer going to take me on board with you. Everything causes disgust when a man the same his own nature. You're not saying anything. Or doing anything. Your father would not have done. What should I do? You're going to betray me. Sail on. Leaving me behind. Um, let's just scroll back a little bit. Where we see, um, I guess, um, Philip Tides reaching out to Neopolemus. And um, let's see if I can get to that part. Over, probably over here. Um, let's watch it one more time. Just notice that. Soon the weakness lets up. We can be off. Up again. There'll be no shocking from the job. Now that you and I have decided what we should do. Take <laughs> All right, right there. Um, I guess this was a good add-in. Um, it kind of shows that they don't directly have a complete relationship full of trust yet. Um, and as you'll see right after this, um, Philip Tides doesn't believe that Neopolemus is there just to, to help him, I guess you could say. And he pulls away. I don't know how to say it. Don't speak like this. It's sickened by my infection. You're no longer going to take me on board with you. That's where the two face comes in. Everything causes disgust when a man the same his own nature. You're not saying anything or doing anything. Your father would not have done. What should I do? You're going to betray me. Say it all. Leaving me behind. All right, there you go. So that's what uh, Philip Tides thinks that. Neopolemus is going to do. He thinks he's going to betray him, and he sensed that. Um, and I think that hand gesture is what made him sense that. No, I'm not. Torrent sending is causing all the pain. It's what I've been agonizing over all this time. What are you saying? I don't understand. I won't keep it secret from you any longer. You need to sail to Troy, to the Greeks, to the army of Agamemnon. And this is where the persuasion comes in. Menelaus, are you saying? Don't be annoyed until you've learned Learned what? Um, notice that uh, Neopolemus is like uh, hesitancy to say the lines. I think that's um, some great acting right there. And um, it shows what's really going on inside his head. And I guess how he's torn between doing the right thing in his mind and doing what... Um, Odysseus wants him to do. What's your plans for me? First thing to save you from this misery. And then just go with you. And lay waste the flames of Troy. What have you done to me? You betrayed me. Give me back my bow. That's no. where his anger I comes in. I must carry them out. You hateful, clever, scheming worker of evil. Look at what you've done to me. How you deceived me. Do you feel no pity as you look upon me? I am at your mercy. You're taking that. Um, I like how this is shot here. You, um, we have ne uh, Neopolemus, his back face towards Philoctetes, and this could show, you know, the body language shows um, maybe a little bit of regret or um, maybe a little bit of unsureness. He's contemplating. I beg you, if you give it back, please give it back. Answer me! Look at me! Bates! Headless beast on the mountain! Craggy rocks, my only companion, seems I have no one else to talk to. Look at this child and see what he has done to me! He swore he would take me home and yet would take me to Troy! He offered me his right hand and with it has taken my bow, the sacred bow of Heracles. Oh, it is a mighty and worthy opponent that you're capturing and going to take off my force. 
I had my former strength, he never would have gotten away with this. And even now, he can only do it through trickery. All right, so we'll stop it there. Um, I like that last line where he says he can only do it through trickery. And um, this is a part in the, in the play that stood out to me. So that's why I um, chose it to do the uh, reaction to. Um, overall, I really like the production. It's kind of hard to understand some of the accents a little bit, especially because I guess the camera is far back. Um, but it seems like a small, <clears throat> a smaller theater, like a little black box theater. I think it's kind of cool because it's more intimate. And you see here where uh, Philip Tees is actually almost talking to the people in the, um, in the crowd there. And if I was sitting there, it would make me more compelled to feel for him and, um, and really step into his shoes. And I feel that if you watch this play, that from the beginning, you should try and do that, trying to step into Philip Tidi's, uh shoes or Neapolimus and really um, try and connect with them or find ways to connect with them. And that really makes it a lot more enjoyable and helps you connect and really see the anguish and the pain that especially Philip Tidi's goes through here. And we see him with the yelling and the anger um, and the limping, obviously. He's got the torn clothes. So I thought they really did a good job with the production overall. Um, I would highly recommend that you watch it. Um, really, I mean, people would think something like this is boring, but if you take the time to sit down and actually watch it and listen to the lyrics and the intonations of how they speak, um, and really you have to encompass the whole thing into it. Like I said, with the lighting, um, that's a really important factor, especially when you're on stage. And I thought they did a great job with this. Um, like I said, with the, um, <clears throat> the chorus, um, I don't think they needed that many people in the chorus. It kind of crowds up the stage a little bit, maybe takes your eye off the main characters. Um, if they split that in half, I think that would be better for the overall, I guess you could say, appeal of the eye for that. Um, what else would I have to say about this? Yeah, I mean, the acting of the main characters, I think they did a, they did a good uh, job in uh, – I guess you could say the movements and the timing was really right. Um, but yeah, I definitely would give it two thumbs up and it, I highly recommend that you guys watch it. Um, all right. I think that's pretty much it. And let me just pause this here. All right. Thank you.